Jeff Foxworthy, and I've got a million dollars to give away to somebody that can prove that they are smarter than a fifth grader. And this is my class, Cody! to meet your new classmates? Yeah! He is a 22-year-old professor who attended Carl Hanky Elementary and to Todd Greco. Todd, welcome to the show. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Look at that. Look at that fifth grader right there. Look at the, notice the mullet, man. That thing's Dude, a Dude, that is a world-class mullet right there. I'd love there. to see a fifth grader with a better mullet than that. Business in the front, party in the back. <laughs> That's how we do it. Now, Todd, it says not only are you a professor, but you're a professor of surfing. Yes, I do. I actually surf and instruct at UCLA, and I actually brought along with me some of my uh, surfing students. Thank you, guys. Oh. Y'all get college credit for surfing? You can't get better than that. Huh. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thanks, there are not many classrooms where bikinis are required. <laughs> All right. Well, these are going to be your classmates today. They're going to be taking the same test you're taking. Pick one of them. Let's get started. All right, here we go. You ever been surfing? Yes, in, ha in Hawaii. Really? Yes. That's some of the best surfer in the best world, right? You gotta go to Hawaii. Hawaii surfing Island. USA. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I right. can tell she's gonna be good. <laughs> well, today we're not surfing. We're taking a little test. That scares me. Let me tell you how it works. On the board, we're gonna show you 10 subjects. They range from first grade through the fifth grade. You can pick them in any order you like. Okay. You ace this test, and we know you will. We're gonna give you an additional question that will be worth one million dollars. Oh yeah. I like your attitude, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Now, Todd, if at any point the surf gets a little rough here, you <laughs> see some sharks and you want to bail out, you can, okay? okay? There's just one catch. In order to walk with the money you've acquired up to that point, you have to look into that camera right there and say to the world, I am not smarter than a fifth grader. I, I will definitely do we that for deal? you. Let's do this. All right. I'm ready to go. Let's find out. Is Todd Greco smarter than a fifth grader? Yeah. All right, here we go. Mackenzie, how do you feel about, uh, let's see, first grade grammar? I feel good, yeah. You good? OK. We're going to go with first grade grammar. First grade grammar, all right. The first grade grammar question worth $1,000 is this, Todd. True or false, there are exactly two nouns in the following sentence. Cody has a goldfish that was born in California. True or false, there are exactly two nouns in the following sentence. Cody has a goldfish that was born in California. OK, let's see here. Mackenzie has locked in her answer. Ooh. All right. Cody has a goldfish that was born in California. We got a proper noun in Cody. We have a proper noun in California and goldfish. So I think I'm going to have to say false on that one. You want to lock that in? I'm going to lock that in. I'm going false. Uh, surf guys don't always have the reputation of being the smartest guys in the world, do they? <laughs> they don't. Well, in this case, they knew their grammar. You're right. You got a thousand Left. Pick your next one. We're surfing now. Where do, you want to, where do you want to surf with that, Mackenzie? Where do you want to go? Anywhere. Let's go. I want to surf down measurements. You like measurements? We're going to go with second grade measurements. Second uh, grade measurements. That's what I'm saying. Let's ride the wave. Let's go, Mackenzie. We're riding the wave. For $2,000, Todd, here's the question. What is the fewest number of current U.S. coins you'll need 
to make exactly 99 cents. What is the fewest number of current U.S. coins you need to make exactly 99 cents? Kenzie is locked in. Let me explain your cheats to you. You have a peak, you have a copy, and you have one save, which means if you answer incorrectly, but your classmate up here has the right answer, you get the money, we keep taking the test. Okay, that sounds fair enough. I think, let's see how I'm gonna explain this. In my head, this is what's working. I got a quarter, I got another quarter for 50 cents. I have one more quarter for 75 cents. And the next, if we go one more quarter, that's a dollar. So we're not gonna use another quarter. We're gonna go dime to make it 85. Another dime to make it 95. We'll go 96 with a penny, 97 with a penny, 98 with a penny, 99 with a penny. So I'll, I don't think I'm gonna use the cheats and I'm gonna go with nine coins and that's my answer. I'm locking it in. Woo! You use your ATM machine a lot, don't you? <laughs> no, I don't, yeah, I definitely don't use coins. Would you be surprised if I told you that you were wrong? Oh, I would. Yeah, because there's a 50 cent piece. <laughs> oh. There is a 50 cent piece. Your thinking was right, but instead of those first two quarters, you have a 50 cent piece which makes the right answer eight. She thought the... Todd, there's one way you keep taking this test, and that's if this 10-year-old girl didn't fall off the board but rode the wave. She doesn't look <laughs> up. For $2,000, can we please see what McKenzie said? Eight coins, you're still in the game! Oh, oh my goodness gracious! Oh. oh, Todd, you're scaring me! You're scaring me, Todd! Uh, um, the 50 cent piece, present. Oh my. Todd. JFK, you hurt me there. <laughs> when, you were in, when you were in elementary school, who was your favorite teacher? When I was in elementary school, my favorite teacher was Mr. Young, without a doubt, fifth grade teacher. Great guy, big built guy, taught me a lot about uh, school and a lot about sports. Guess Love what? Him. He came all the way down here no, today to cheer you he on. Didn't. Look right there. Oh my God! You <laughs> can do this! Mr. Young. Yes. Was it a little embarrassing to see us miss a second grade question? You know, I think he was absent that day. He was absent that day. <laughs> Surf was up. <laughs> Sorry to let you All know. All right, your classmates can only help you two questions at a time, so you need to pick another one. OK, we'll go with um, Nathan. I like Nathan. Nathan, come up here. Let's go, Nathan. Yeah. Woo! All right, Todd, let's turn $2,000 into $5,000. All right? Let's All go. right? Let's pick go. a subject. Hey, what, what, what subjects do you like up there, Nathan? What's left? Uh, astronomy, science, and math. All right, I think we're gonna go with third grade math. Third grade yeah. math, all right, Todd. All right. The $5,000 third grade math question is coming up when we come back. Our contestant, Professor Greco, got $2,000. We're about to play for five. Let's do it. Let's go. collected third grade math. For $5,000, Todd, here is the third grade math question. If Nathan ate 27 pieces of licorice in six hours, on average, how many pieces did he eat per hour? If Nathan ate 27 pieces of licorice in six hours, on average, how many pieces did he eat per hour? 
You gotta lay off the candy, dude. <laughs> He's locked in. He's locked in, okay. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that uh, if Nathan ate 27 pieces of licorice in six hours, we're gonna try and find the average per hour. So there's six hours, and we're gonna go six into 27. That would go, well, four times. That would be 24. Um, with a remainder of three, and three into, um, let's see, six would be a half. So it's 4.5. Eight, four and a half pieces of licorice per hour. Four and a half pieces of licorice, I'm locking that in. divided by six equals 4.5. Yeah. We are about to play for $10,000. Here we go. Let's go. All right. You've got seven subjects left. Pick one. Uh, we're going to go with uh, fourth grade science on this one. Fourth grade science. Okay. For $10,000. Here is our fourth grade science question. Which of the following trees is considered a conifer? Oak, pine, or maple? <laughs> <laughs> Which of the following trees is considered a conifer? Oak, pine, or maple? How well do you know your trees? <laughs> I don't know very many trees at all. I live near a beach, so I'm gonna have to definitely use a peak on this one, and I'm gonna lock that in. You want to pee? Yeah. All right, your 10-year-old classmate Nathan said, Pine, how's that feel? <laughs> well, it feels great considering I don't know which one it is. And he locked in pretty quickly, and he's got a great smile on his face. So you know what? I think I'm going to go with what he wrote and say, what'd you say? <laughs> pine, I'm going with pine. <laughs> pine is right, you got $10,000. a different vibe in the classroom <laughs> when the surfing friends are here, you we know? We bring the ruckus. <laughs> All right, we have six questions left. You've got three classmates to choose from. I'm gonna go with Olivia. Olivia! Go, Olivia, yeah! Hello, Miss Olivia. Hello. All right, we have six subjects. Pick one. Oh. How do you feel about music? Music's music's good. Good? I, like, I okay. play the piano, so. You play the piano? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go with music. First grade music. First grade music. All right, this is an important question. You answer this question correctly, the worst thing that can happen today is you're walking out of here with $25,000, okay? Let's do it. The $25,000 question is coming up right after this. <laughs> for $25,000. The first grade music question is, true or false, a cello is larger in size than a viola? True or false, a cello is larger in size than a viola? Olivia has locked in her answer. Okay, true or false, a cello is larger in size than a viola? I think that's true, and I'm going to lock that in. Let's 
take a look at the board. Voila! You got $25,000, Todd. Yeah! You got it in the bag! Whoa! <laughs> we are halfway to a million dollars. You are down to your last cheat. I am. Pick another subject. We're about to play for 50000 OK. What do you like up there? You Hold want... on a second. Mr. Young, what do you think? Uh, reading's looking kind of nice to me from reading's here. Reading's looking kind of <laughs> nice. I'm going to go with third grade reading. <laughs> Third grade reading for $50,000. Here's the question, Todd. What was the pen name of author Charles Dodson, who wrote Alice's Adventures in Wonderland? What was the pen name of author Charles Dodson, who wrote Alice's Adventures in Wonderland? She's locked in. OK. I don't even need to read this over in my head again because I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? I didn't do much reading, and I'm going to copy her. So that is what I'm locking in with. Yeah. 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 Come on. You feel good? You feel good? All right. Let's see what the class said. You had no idea, no guess. Not even a clue. Not even a clue. I don't clue. even know who he is. I love your honesty. The class said, Lewis Carroll. I hope you have Lewis Carroll. I will tell you this, those four kids are correct. <laughs> yeah, good. You guys are smart kids. Did this kid say Lewis Carroll? That is a great question. A $50,000 question, and we're going to find out the answer when we come back. Come on! Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Professor Greco, is playing for $50,000. Yeah, sounds good. That sounds good. The third grade question was, what was the pen name of author Charles Dodson who wrote Alice's Adventures in Wonderland? You had no idea. Not a clue. Not a clue. Not even anything remote. Everyone in the class said Lewis Carroll. Everyone in the class over there was right. But you elected to copy Olivia's paper. If she said Lewis Carroll, you have $50,000. If not, you're going home with 25. dollars Take a look at the board, Todd. Let's see what Olivia said. Lewis Carroll! Yeah! 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 You have used both your cheats. You have used your save. You've got $50,000. I do. No more help. <laughs> it's you and four questions before the million dollar question. OK. Which one would you like to go with first, Todd? Uh, I don't know anything about ancient cultures. And astronomy was never my subject. I think U.S. history would probably be my best bet. U.S. history? Yeah. Fifth right. grade U.S. history. Don't hit the buzzer too quickly, OK? Because if you're wrong, you will drop down to $25,000. OK. For $100,000, the fifth grade U.S. history question is, oh, it's a classroom club question. I love classroom club questions. What this means. As one of our viewers, in this case a fifth grader, Austin from Lower Lab Elementary, sent in this question. And because we picked Austin's question, 
We are going to send his school a computer lab, courtesy yeah. of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grade? Good. All right. For $100,000, let's see Austin's question, please. In 1823, what document written by the U.S. President stated that America was against future colonization by any European powers? In 1823, what document written by the U.S. President stated that America was against future colonization by any European powers. We have no classmates to help us we anymore. Got, we got nothing up here. What would you do with $50,000, Todd? I'd go away for a while and surf around the world, and that's what's going through my mind right now as I look at this question. But there are a few things that are in my mind as I read it, because $100,000 does sound better than $50,000. I can go on twice Every as time. <laughs> Twice as long as a search trip. Fifty thousand so. dollars sounds better than twenty-five. <laughs> I see. The president was maybe James Mad or James Madison, maybe in the War of 1812, after they were with the British. <laughs> wasn't the Declaration of Independence? It wasn't any Bill of Rights. It wasn't. It wasn't the Emancipation Proclamation. It wasn't. What document could that be? written by the U.S. president. I think I'm going to have to keep my $50,000 and I'm going to drop out of school and I'm going to lock that in. That was a wise move. You're smart enough to know what you do not know. Yeah. And a lot of people get in trouble by guessing at this point in the game. Mr. Young. Yes. I do believe I was absent that day. <laughs> <laughs> Your teacher, see that ought to make you feel better. <laughs> the Monroe Doctrine. Oh, Mad Monroe is after Madison. But you've got fifty thousand dollars, Todd. That's a good day. Yeah, it's not good. That is a good day. Now you remember our little deal? It was a good deal. Look behind that wave into that camera and tell the world. My name is Todd Greco. I may be able to surf better than these fifth graders, but I'm definitely not smarter than them. We'll be right back, right after this. Congratulations, dude. That was smart. You did yeah. the right thing. I didn't know. I knew the name was president. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Are you guys ready to meet your new classmate? Yeah. All right. She is a 36-year-old fashion buyer who attended Julius T. Wright Elementary in Mobile, Alabama. Please welcome Jenny Hurd. attended uh, Julius T. Wright's Elementary in Mobile, Alabama, a yeah. southern girl. <laughs> yes, sir, it was. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And probably right around the fifth grade here. I think so. Yeah, and just about. You know, it's funny because when I was young, my hair was blonde, and then as I got older, it got darker. And <laughs> yours is kind of dark there, and as you've gotten older, yours has gotten lighter. Yeah, well, yeah. Um... Yeah. These are your classmates. They're going to be taking the same test that you are, and we're going to actually let you cheat off of them during the course of the game. So pick one of them, and let's get started. OK. Um, God, that's so hard. They're all good. Oh, my God. Sierra. Sierra. Come on up here, Sierra. The, the blondes Blonde are power. Blonde yes. power. The blondes are sticking <laughs> together. Ready, yeah. And I know from hanging around with Sierra, the blonde joke's not yeah. true in this case. No. Mm -mm, no, no way. <laughs> All right, Jenny. <laughs> if at any point the test gets to be too difficult, you can drop out of our little classroom. You can take the money and run. Okay. Just make me a promise. Before you leave us, you'll look into that camera and tell the world I am not smarter than a fifth grader. I promise. We got a deal. We have a deal. All right. Let's find out, is Jenny Hurst smarter than a fifth grader? God, I have <laughs> All right.
right, Jenny, 10 subjects. Your first correct answer is worth $1,000. Pick one of them. How about first, first, first grade geography? First grade geography? Is that you like that? Is that okay? Is that all right? All right, Jenny, for $1,000, here's the question. How many U.S. states do not border another state? How many U.S. states do not border another state? This is first grade. This is first grade. <laughs> oh. Sierra has locked in. <laughs> um. Right now, you look about as confused as a dog with two tails. It's like. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> and your mom is a retired school teacher, right? <laughs> yes, she taught um, English and drama. She's, she's got to be really proud right now, doesn't <laughs> yeah. she? Yeah. Yeah, she's. What, uh, what are you thinking, Jenny? How many U.S. states do not border another state? I mean, okay, I'm thinking it's first grade, so it's got to be pretty. If I just think about it, I have to know the answer because I'm oh, You know what I mean? Like, I should know this. Right. Wait, I think how many U.S. states do not border any other state? Well, it's got to be just. Two. I'm thinking, okay, my answer is two. <laughs> that only took like an hour, huh? Jenny. Yeah. You're right, you got a thousand dollars. Don't border any other state. What are they, Sierra? Hawaii and Alaska. Hawaii and Alaska, that's right. Thank you. All right. Okay. For $2,000, pick another subject. Okay. First grade anatomy. First grade anatomy. All right, Jenny, here is. The $2,000 question. Okay, come on. What is the name of the joint in the human body that connects the hand to the forearm? What is the name of the joint in the human body that connects the hand to the forearm? Your classmate Sierra has locked in her answer. Was anatomy a good subject for you? Um, not really. <laughs> not really. What's the name of the joint in the human body Okay, connects the hand to the forearm. What's the name of that joint? I think. <laughs> Do you have a forearm? Yes. Yes. Do and you I have, have a, a hand? hand. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so, what's the name of that joint? Do the math. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, oh, but. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Deep breaths. Okay, ready? I have an answer, please. My answer is wrist. <laughs> okay. What did you say was your answer? Wrist. Wrist. You, you, everything you say to me has a question mark on the end of it. I'm supposed to ask the questions. Wrist. Wrist. Wrist, please. Wrist, please. <laughs> Wrist, you're welcome. You got $2,000. Nice job, Sierra. Sierra had wrist. They all had wrist. All right, time to pick a new classmate. Okay, pick me. Have you ever been to the South? Uh, no. Okay, well, there's some stereotypes about us, all right? Don't believe all of them. We are eight questions away from a million dollars. Pick one of them. Um, what? Third grade math. Third grade math. Okay. 
Okay. That's not really a confidence builder. She said, third grade math, come on, Nathan. Uh, but we got to get through all of them. I know. But pretty okay. much, I think we're all thinking, come on, Nathan. All right. <laughs> For $5,000, Jen, here's the question. Cody no. has three pandas who each eat 42 pounds of bamboo a day. How many pounds of bamboo does he need to feed them all for two days? Cody has three pandas okay. who each eat 42 pounds of bamboo a day. How many pounds of bamboo does he need to feed them all for two days? <laughs> I don't get scratch paper, huh? No. <laughs> Okay. But you can spit on your finger and write on the desk <laughs> if you want to. You know, I am from the South. <laughs> um, okay. All right, Nathan has locked in his answer. Talk it out, Jen. Okay, so three pandas. Here's 42, 6, 12, 26. Two days. Oh, so I just, okay, hang on, hang on. Okay. I can do it. I had a feeling you were going to say that. Four times three. And 26, 12. Okay, um, I would like to coffee, please. Yeah, I'm gonna use my coffee. Man. <laughs> I like what the What happened to all the fancy cypher you just doing? May I please use my coffee? <laughs> you just said I can do this, and then you went through all the math, and then you said I want a copy. Yeah. What did you come up with, if you had, if you had, had to guess? Dude, dude, 352. 352. Yeah. Okay. If you had had to guess and you'd said 352, you would have been wrong. Okay. But that doesn't matter. Huh? The only thing that matters since you elected to copy is what Nathan said. Right. I want to do this. Will you show me what Olivia said? Olivia said 252. Which one I should have said. That's the right answer. <laughs> Doesn't matter what Olivia said. It matters what Nathan said. And we're going to find out when we come back. Oh! Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Jenny Hirsch, is playing for $5,000. It was a third grade math question. Yes. The question, Cody has three pandas who each eat 42 pounds of bamboo a day. How many pounds of bamboo does he need to feed them all for two days? You elected to copy. Yes. <laughs> then I showed you what Olivia said. Olivia said 252 pounds, which is the right answer. Yay, Olivia. <laughs> but it doesn't matter what Olivia now. said. The only thing that matters is what Nathan said. For $5,000, Nathan said. 252! Oh, I love you, Nathan! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't really win things. He's pretty cute, isn't he? I love Nathan. Yeah, Dude. you love Nathan. Dude, I'm single. We can work this out. No, I'm kidding. I'm older. I'm, when I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm ready. You've, okay. done, you've done very well. You've got $5,000 you didn't have when you walked in. <laughs> You're starting to relax. Yeah, exactly. Let's turn $5,000 into $10,000, okay? Let's do it. Pick a subject. All right. All right. Um, yeah. Second grade science. Second grade science. Jenny. The $10,000 question is, true or false, the positively charged ends of two magnets will attract each other. True or false, the positively charged ends of two magnets will attract each other. Nathan answered before I could repeat the question. That may be good news for you. Okay. You've got that look. No, this is a good look. No, this is a good look. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, I'll say that now. Um, the what you thinking, Jen? The charged ends of two magnets attract each other. Ready? I say false. <laughs> Great. 
Why did you guess faults? Because I think they um, deflect each other, correct? Deflect? Yeah, or <laughs> they... Repel? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Do not attract. And you know, if you answer incorrectly right now, you go home with nothing. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You made your mama proud. You got $10,000. <laughs> Good job, Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you so much. All right, Jim. Okay. You play it for twenty-five thousand. Pick another classmate. Out of the six left, what's your favorite subject? My favorite subject is fifth grade literature. Fifth grade literature. I'm gonna go with fifth grade literature. You going with fifth grade literature? She wants fifth grade literature for $25,000, Jenny. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Trust me, I feel the same way. Here's the question. Playwright William Shakespeare was born in what century? Playwright William Shakespeare was born in what century? Okay. You said your mom taught English. Uh-huh. Mackenzie, Mackenzie has locked in her answer. You have that look. Is that a good look? You said the last time it was a good look. No, this isn't a good look. <laughs> Not a good look. Yeah, I feel like I kind of know it, but now I'm second guessing everything that I've. What, what are you thinking? Think. I thought it was like 1800s, and I should really know this. Like my mother would be very upset with me. <laughs> oh, can't they ask me like a play or something? Like I know that. I know. Uh, she okay. doesn't want yeah. this question. Can we get another one? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, you, b before you do anything, you can drop out. You do have $10,000. It's a good day's pay. True. I mean, $10,000 is a lot of money, especially for me right now. She answered really quick. So, um, I think I will use my peak. I want a peak. Please. Question, playwright William Shakespeare was born in what century? Mackenzie said, 1700. I was thinking 1800. <laughs> Don't you like that? It's like, okay, you know what? It's okay. So, um, so I'm gonna go with 1700. Jenny. Yeah. William Shakespeare lived from 1564 until 16. 16, which would be the 1500s or the 16th century. I'm sorry, that is incorrect, and we drop down to nothing. Jenny, I hate to ask you to do this. You've been such a great contestant, but we had a promise. There's the camera. My name is Jenny Hirsch, and I'm not smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.
trustworthy, and I've got a million dollars to give away to somebody that can prove that they are smarter than a fifth grader. And this is my class, Cody! your new classmates? Yeah! He is a 50-year-old middle school principal who attended Washington Elementary in Union, New Jersey. Welcome, Neil Roden! Yeah! Neil, yeah. how are you? Great! Welcome Great. to the show! My pleasure. And I'm guessing this is a, uh, photo of, of when you were attending Washington Elementary? That's me in fifth grade. Look at that. You look like you work for the Eisenhower administration <laughs> or something. So a, a middle school principal, how, what kind of job is that? The best job in the world. Really? Oh, well, how cool. Yeah. These are your new classmates. So pick one of them and let's get started. All right, Mackenzie. Mackenzie, come on up here. Let me tell you how this game works. On the board, you're going to see 10 questions. They range from first grade through the fifth grade. You ace this test, and we know you will. We're going to give you an additional question that will be worth $1 million. Wow! Now, at any point, you can drop out of school here, OK? You can take the money that you want, and you can leave. But before you leave, you have to look into that camera and tell millions of people, I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Do oh, I have your word on that, you, Neil? You got my word. <laughs> the middle school principal. I trust tough. your word. All right, let's find out, is Neil Roden smarter than a fifth grader? All right, 10 subjects, Neil, time to pick one. What do you think, Neil? All right, we're going to try first grade spelling. First grade spelling. All right. The first grade spelling question is, spell the following word. Giraffe. Spell the word giraffe. Your classmate Mackenzie has locked in. Okay, I think I'm gonna spell this one on my own. All right, giraffe. G-I-R-A-F-F-E. Board, Neil, giraffe is actually spelled G I R A F F E. You're right, you got a thousand dollars. McKinsey had the right answer as well. All right, you're off to a good start. Let's double it. Let's go uh, first grade English. First grade English. All right, Neil. The first grade English question worth $2,000 is, how many past tense verbs are in the following sentence? Nathan thought that Sierra ate his lunch. How many past tense verbs are in the following sentence? Nathan thought that Sierra ate his lunch. Mackenzie has locked in her answer. We got two verbs, thought, and eight. And both of those are past tense because it would be think and eat. I'm going to say two. Locking it in. I will tell you this, Neil. Nathan was wrong. I ate Nathan's lunch. Sierra had nothing to do with it. <laughs> All right. The 
question. How many past tense verbs are in the following sentence? Nathan thought that Sierra ate his lunch. You said two. Let's see what Mackenzie said, see if she can save you if you're wrong. Mackenzie said two. She can't save you. She doesn't have to. You got $2,000. Two past tense verbs, thought and ate. See how easy this is? It's a lot easier from home. Yeah. <laughs> All right, pick another classmate. All right. Cody. Cody, come on up here. And Anil. I will say this, you have one of the largest cheering sections I've ever seen on the show. You want to say hello to the people over here cheering for you today? Family, friends, students. My brother and my entire school. That's all. Awesome. Students, teachers, parents. That's Just awesome. the best. All right, you got $2,000. The next question is worth $5,000, Neil. Eight subjects remain. Let's do third grade math. Third grade math. The $5,000 question is, a pack of baseball cards contains Eight cards. What is the fewest number of packs you need to have 58 cards? A pack of baseball cards contains eight cards. What's the fewest number of packs you need to have 58 cards? Cody has locked in his answer. If I had seven packs, I'd have 56, so I'd have to Buy another pack to get 58. So I would have to have eight packs. And I'm locking in my answer. And if I miss this, <laughs> I will not I have a have teaching job. I couldn't explain it better myself. You're absolutely right. You got yeah. five thousand dollars. All right, you got $5,000 and we'll be playing for $10,000 right after this. Welcome back to All You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader. Our contestant, Neil Roden, has got $5,000. He's about to play for ten. dollars He's a middle school principal. You got a lot of people here rooting for you today. We are about to play for $10,000. You have seven subjects remaining on the board, Neil. It's time to select one of them. Uh, let's go with second grade social studies. Second grade social studies. A question normally answered by seven-year-olds. For $10,000, here's the second grade social studies question. True or false, the U.S. president must be a natural born citizen of the United States. True or false, the U.S. president must be a natural born citizen of the United States. Cody has locked in his answer. That is Absolutely, oh, I hope I'm not putting myself in there. Absolutely true. Lock again. Oh, yeah. I will tell you this everybody at the desk got it absolutely right. You want to see what they said? Oh, if, yeah. Right away. The class said, True, you got $10,000. Good job, Cody. Thank you, bud. 
You would like this class. They are smart. They were five for five. All right. We are down to six questions and three classmates. It's time to pick another one. All right. All right, Olivia. Olivia! All right, well, we have six subjects remaining. It's your choice, Neil. All right. Olivia, let's go with second grade life science. Second grade life science. The $25,000 second grade life science question is, Oh, it's a classroom club question. This means that we take these questions from actual students around the country. In this case, it was Julia from Incarnation Catholic School. She is a second grader there. And because we selected Julia's question, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, is giving her school a computer lab. How about that? Oh, wow. As a principal, you got to like that. All right. That's great. Let's see Julia's question for $25,000. Which of the following is an insect body part? Lorax, thorax, syntax. Which of the following is an insect body part? Lorax, thorax, syntax. Olivia has locked in her answer. It's head, thorax, abdomen. So I'm locking in with thorax, choice B. To see an insect body? We've got a picture of one. Take a look at the board, Neil. Abdomen, yes. thorax, yeah. in the head. You are right, you got $25,000. Yes. Neil, here's the good news. You won't have to hang your head in shame at uh, the school. Uh. Regardless of what happens the rest of the game, yep. you've got at least $25,000. Right. And we're halfway through this test. Uh. Five subjects remain. Pick your next subject and let's play for $50,000. All right. Uh... Let's do third grade U.S. Geography. For $50,000, the third grade U.S. Geography question is, what is the capital of Michigan? What is the capital of Michigan? Olivia has locked in her answer. How were you on state capitals? Pretty good. And what is the capital of Michigan? Lansing, and I'm gonna lock it in. <laughs> Did Ann Arbor ever cross your mind? No. Good, because the answer's Lansing. Yes! You got $50,000. Oh, and we'll be playing for $100,000 when we come back. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Neil Roden, has $50,000. How you feeling? Feeling good. Feeling good. Little schwitzen, but I'm feeling good. <laughs> All right, Mr. Middle School Principal, it's time to pick uh, another classmate, and let's go for $100,000. All right. Sierra. Sierra, come on up here. 
Four subjects remain. For $100,000. Let's go. Fourth grade astronomy. Fourth grade astronomy. Let me remind you, Neil, you can still hear the question and drop out of school, okay? You have both your cheats remaining, you have your save remaining. This question is worth $100,000. The fourth grade astronomy question is, in 1962, who was the first U.S. astronaut to orbit the Earth? In 1962, who was the first U.S. astronaut to orbit the Earth. Sierra has locked in her answer. In 1962, who was the first U.S. astronaut to orbit the Earth? I think that was John Glenn, and I'm gonna lock it in. You're not real big on cheating, are you? No. No. Not at all. Uh-uh. Not allowed. Trying to be a good example for all your students here today. Always. Not going to cheat. <laughs> Even if it costs you $75,000, you're not going to cheat. Nope. No. I admire that. In 1962, who was the first U.S. astronaut to orbit the Earth? Actually, orbited the Earth three times. And you know why that happened? Because he was a guy and he didn't want to stop for directions. <laughs> <laughs> and the astronaut was John Glenn. You got yeah. 100,000. quite a while. I don't know that I've ever seen anybody get this far and be this calm and confident. I, I'm serious. And you know, you know. A lot of smart people have stood where you are standing right now. We have never given away a million dollars. This could be the day today. Yeah. Only three subjects left on the test, Neil. Which one would you like? Uh, let's do fourth grade ancient cultures. Fourth grade ancient cultures. For $175,000, here's the question. The peak of the ancient Maya civilization occurred approximately when? 3500 B.C., 900 A.D., 1750 A.D. The peak of the ancient Maya civilization occurred approximately when? 3500 B.C., 900 A.D., 1750 A.D. Sierra has locked in her answer. What are you thinking, Neil? I'm thinking toss up between two. Multiple so, choice. So, in this situation. What are the two you're thinking of? 900 and 1750. You have both your cheats left. Or you have a save. You get it right, you got $175,000. You miss it, you drop down to $25,000. That's a $150,000 swing. Or you could walk out of here right now with $100,000. I think I'm going to do 
a peak. You want a peak? The middle school principal finally cheated. <laughs> the question is, the peak of the ancient Maya civilization occurred approximately when? 3500 BC, 900 AD, or 1750 AD? You were between 900 AD and 1750 AD. Sierra said, 3500 BC. So it looks like we have the entire board covered. You're down to two. All right. Columbus is 1492 and all those people come after him and pretty much destroy things by 1750. Okay, so at this point, she said 3500. If I say 900, then you have two we got of the, those two answers two covered. Two of the three answers covered. Okay, I'm gonna play it safe, since I've messed this one up, and I'm going to, you did A, right? I'm going to lock in with B. I'm feeling like we got it covered. It's the first time you've looked nervous during the entire test. Neil, I've got some bad news. The correct answer is coming up right after this. <laughs> fifth grader, our contestant middle school principal, Neil Roden, has got $100,000. We're playing for $175,000. I gave you the option to drop out of school with $100,000. You didn't want to do that. The question, the peak of the ancient Maya civilization occurred approximately when? 3500 BC, 900 AD, 1750 A.D. I will tell you this. One of the two you originally thought is the right answer. You were torn between 900 A.D. and 1750 A.D. You cannot be saved here because Sierra is wrong. Let's see what the rest of the class said, just for giggles. You were torn between two answers and so were they. How are you feeling now, Neil? Not good. <laughs> but hopeful. You haven't said it's wrong yet. Uh, the question was, the peak of the ancient Maya civilization occurred approximately when? 3500 BC, 900 AD, that's what you selected. 1750 AD. You didn't walk away with $100,000. And because of that, you now have 175,000. The right answer is B, 900 AD. <laughs> you can return to the class, Sierra, because Mr. Roden is down to his last classmate, Nathan, come on up All here. Right, Nathan. Come on, buddy. We have two questions left. They're both fifth grade questions. The next correct answer, say it, Neil, is worth how much? $300,000. $300,000. Time to pick another subject. Let's go science. Science. For $300,000, here it is. 
After discovering radium in 1898, what French chemist became the first woman to win a Nobel Prize? After discovering radium in 1898, what French chemist became the first woman to win a Nobel Prize? Nathan has locked in his answer. He's usually pretty fast, not quite so fast that time. What do you know about chemistry? It wasn't uh, one of my best subjects. But after discovering radium in 1898, what French chemist became the first woman to win a Nobel Prize? And radium is so 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to go with Marie Curie, and I'm gonna lock my answer in. Now we've got some pretty smart kids here. There's five of them. One of them said Marie Curie. One of them. After discovering radium in 1898, what French chemist became the first woman to win a Nobel Prize? Neil, the correct answer is Marie Curie. You got $300,000. Nathan had the correct answer as well. Come on, buddy. How you feeling? Nervous. Neil, there's one question left on the board. What's it worth? A half million dollars. Half a million dollars. Half a million dollars. That's what it's worth, and that's what we're going to be playing for right after this. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? We are about to play for half a million dollars with our middle school principal, Neil Roden. The last subject, Neil, is literature. You can see the question and still drop out with $300,000, okay? Do not answer too quickly, Neil. Okay. You ready to see the question? Yep. All right. I'm ready. For half a million dollars, the fifth grade literature question is, Gulliver's Travels is a novel written by what 18th century author? Gulliver's Travels is a novel written by what 18th century author? Nathan has locked in his answer. The question, Gulliver's Travels is a novel written by what 18th century author? It's a good question. That's why it's at the top of the board. Here's your options. You have a copy left, have a save left. You could walk out of here right now with $300,000. Or you could answer the question yourself. I have an idea about who it is. What's your idea? For some reason, the name Swift is coming to my brain, but it's, it's not certain enough, and I should have taken my sixth grade teacher's advice to heart. 
because on the back of my report card at one term, she wrote, it's a shame he doesn't read more. <laughs> Little did she know it would be worth half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Guys, what I'm about to say, I don't ever want you to say, but I've got to drop out of school. I would have loved to have given you $500,000. All you had to know was the name of the author of Gulliver's Travels. If you had had to guess, you would have said? Swift. First name? I want to say Jonathan. If you had have said that, you would have half a million dollars. <laughs> Jonathan Swift wrote Gulliver's Travels. No shame here. You're walking out with $300,000, Neil. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Great job. One last piece of business we have. Yes. Remember it? There's the camera. My name is Neil Roden. I'm a middle school principal, and I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Smarter than a fifth grader. Are you guys ready to meet your new classmate? Yeah! All right. She's a 19-year-old sophomore at San Diego State University. She attended Lake Forest Elementary. Hi. Welcome, Kaylin Godfrey. How you doing? Kaylin, how are you? Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Oh. Look at you. Is this at Lake Forest Elementary? It is. Surely this was not picture day. This had to be the auditions for the Olivia what? Newton John tribute show or something. <laughs> and you attend San Diego State? I do, yeah. Majoring in? Political science. Political science. And I understand that you brought some of your sorority sisters with you today. I did. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Welcome to the show. With an A, with an A. Looks like there's one or two good times around the old sorority house, huh? Many. Yeah. <laughs> All right, welcome to our classroom. Thank you. You've got some new classmates today. These guys are going to be taking the same test you're taking, and we're going to let you cheat off of them. That's good news. Correct. So pick one of them, and let's get started. I think I'm going to do Cody. That's my brother's name. Oh, OK. Yeah, Cody. I like your shoes. Thank you. All right. If at any point the test gets to be too difficult, you can drop out with the money that you've acquired. But before you leave us, you have to tell the entire planet I am not smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> I can do it. You can do it? I, I believe it. you. All right. <laughs> Let's find out, is Kaylin Godfrey smarter than a fifth grader? Right. For $1,000, pick your first subject. First grade science, all right. For $1,000. The first grade question is, true or false, all carrots are orange in color. True or false, all carrots are orange in color. Your classmate Cody has locked in his answer. Got that serious look on well, your I face. Well, I feel like this is an obvious answer, but then again, what? <laughs> okay, all carrots are orange in color. I've only eaten orange carrots in my life. So I'm gonna say all carrots are orange in color. I'm gonna say that that is true. Let's ask your sorority sisters what they think. You like her answer true? I think it's right. Think it's right? Yeah. 
First grade science. Guess what, girls? You're all wrong. There are white, yellow, and purple carrots. Oh. So, here's where we stand. If he didn't say false, you may still have time to catch the bus before it leaves the school parking lot. <laughs> Let's hope he said false. For $1,000, your good luck charm, Cody, said false. Did you know the other colors that they came in as well? I love a smart class. All right, so pick another subject and let's get there. Um, what? Let's do geography. Geography, all right. First grade U.S. geography. Kaylin, here is the $2,000 question. What word does the C stand for in the U.S. city known as Washington, D.C.? What word does the C stand for in the U.S. city known as Washington, D.C.? Cody has locked in his answer. You feeling better about Washington, D.C. than carrots? I, I am, yeah. Okay, the C in Washington, D.C. stands for Columbia. <laughs> Please. The college girl got one right on her own. You got $2,000. Way to go, Kayla. Thanks for the help, Thanks, Cody. Cody. All right, they can only help you a couple of questions at a time, so you need to pick another classmate. Mackenzie. Mackenzie, come on up here. Kayla, go ahead and pick a subject. Your choice. Grammar. Grammar? Grammar. All right. Grammar. She wants second grade grammar. grammar. The $5,000 question is, what word is the action verb in the following sentence? When Olivia is at the beach, she swims in the ocean. What word is the action verb in the following sentence? When Olivia is at the beach, she swims in the ocean. Mackenzie has locked in her answer. Okay. I was never very good at grammar. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between an action verb and a verb? I don't think there you is. You tell me. I don't know. I'm thinking. Um, I want to go with my... Okay, I'm going to trust my instinct here. And the action verb in the following sentence is swim. I would imagine if you go into politics, you're gonna to have to trust your instincts a lot of time. And in this case, your instincts were absolutely right. You got $5,000. <laughs> Nothing to it. $5,000, let's double that right now. You want to? Seven subjects remain. Pick one of them, Kaylin. Um, let's do second grade physical education. Let's second grade it. physical education. We're going to climb the ladder. We're climbing the ladder. For $10,000, the second grade question is, Coming up next time on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Good night, everybody.